your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We continue with our series of this Green Book, The Catechism Explained. Because our daily masses, as much as possible, are also opportunities for us to deepen our faith. And faith refers to three things always. The knowledge of God, the love of God, and the obedience to God. Love God with all your mind, knowledge of God. Love God with all your heart, the love of God, affection to God, devotion to God. And love God with all your strength, obedience to his commandments. That's why when we talk about faith, we do not talk about doctrine only. There are three components always of faith. We should not forget it. Because people identify faith with simply teachings of faith. But faith is lacking if it's not put into action. That's why we need to deepen our faith, to strengthen our faith in God. And of course, faith starts with God. It does not start with man. Faith always starts with God. The question is not what is my purpose in life, but what is God's purpose for me and for the world. Because secularism teaches us to ask questions, what is our purpose in this world? And we are the ones seeking for the resp to, to, the, to answer to this question. No, for Christians who are not secularists, but believers of God, the first question is, what is God's purpose for me? What is God's purpose for my family? What is God's purpose for the world? And then we discover the purpose. We don't invent the purpose. We simply discover God's purpose. That's why we need to discern. We need to pray. We need to be connected to God. In season and out of season, during war, during COVID, or out of COVID, our question always is, do I actualize God's purpose in my life? That's why we have the church. That's why we have the structures of the church and we have the building to remind people of this purpose and to help people actualize the very purpose intended by God for them. So what is the purpose? The purpose of our life in this world is to glorify God. To give glory to God. That's the end of creation. 
Grasses give glory to God. Rocks, in their very nature, give glory to God. Angels and saints, men, women, give glory to God. Butterflies, mosquitoes, etc. actually give glory to God. Everything, everybody gives glory to God. All creatures on earth are created for this end, that they may manifest in themselves the divine perfections and God's dominion over his rational creatures that is over angels and saints and that he may be loved and praised by them. So creatures were created for man, for humankind, so that humankind can use them, not abuse them, use them properly in order to give glory to God because man is the spokesperson of the world to give glory to God. That's why we have our holy masses every day because we are the spokesperson today of the whole world to praise God. Flowers want to praise God. Everything wants to praise God. But they don't have mouth. They don't have the mind and the reason. They don't have this love that we have. That's why we summarize, in other words, we gather all the praises of the world in order to, to praise God, to worship God. And we worship God when we become the best version of ourselves. Because each one shares in the attributes of God, in the perfections of God. Some share in the singing of God. Some share in the reason of God. Some share in the beauty of God. Some share in the humility of God and forgiveness of God and generosity of God. Everybody shares in the perfections and attributes of God. And you know what? It's unique. With all the billions of people in the world, you are the only one who has that particular specific attributes which God has given you in order to let it shine into the world, to manifest God into the world. That's why that's our purpose. Some of you are fathers because God is a father. Some of you are mothers because God has attributes also of a loving mother. I am a priest because Jesus is also a priest. That's why his attributes he shared to me as priest and I implement it and I actualize it. That's why we become perfect when we actualize the attribute of God has given us. So this is our purpose. So what is your attribute? What is your talent? For some additional gifts of the Spirit or charisms of the Spirit because they want to manifest God through their lives and to change the world and to bring the world to glorify God. So amu ina ang aton katuyuan makita naton kung ano ang aton kanamion na halin man sa Dios kaginang aton mga manami sa aton kabuhi gina develop naton gina pasalamatan naton ng Dios kagina share naton sa iban kay mapatay kita sa kalibutan pero ang attribute sang Dios particular unique nga ginhatag sa aton na realize naton so the more you realize the attribute of God the more you are united to him the more you become like unto him the more you become like Jesus the more you become like God because you manifest a certain aspect of God's attribute. So if you're generous, because God is generous, you become more like God. If you're humble, because God is humble, humility, obedient, you become. So like madres, religious sisters, they follow the three evangelical councils, the life of poverty, of chastity and obedience, 
because Jesus is poor, because Jesus is chaste, because Jesus is obedient. That's why when you observe this, you become more perfect, so to say. Actualized, so to say. Because you do not actualize your own plan. You actualize the attribute of God has given you in this world at least for 70 years or 80 years. And then one day, you will be given a reward. And the reward is the very life of God itself. No longer the attributes of God, but God himself. And you will receive him just as you receive the Holy Communion. That's why the Holy Communion is the anticipation of the reward. It's the actualization. It's already present. At the same time, it's also a future promise because eventually our reward is communion with God to be with God forever. So we work together. We try to evangelize. We try to teach the world about this because the world does not listen to God's purpose. It creates its own purpose. But Christians, Catholics, we are exhorted to teach the world of the purpose of God. And in summary, to glorify God. And what does this mean? To be the best version of yourself. The best version of yourself is to discern the attribute God has given you and then actualize it and you will find yourself happy. Amen. Please stand.